Good afternoon. Thanks for joining us across the fence. I'm Fran Stoddard. Every year, it is our honor to announce the winner of the Vermont Dairy Farm of the Year Award. The announcement happens in the summer, but the nomination process starts now. To learn more, here's UVM Extension's Farm Management Educator and a Chair of the Vermont Dairy Farm of the Year Nominating Committee. The Vermont Dairy Farm of the Year Award recognizes Vermont's best farmer. The ones who are providing outstanding milk quality, outstanding innovative technology, and bringing the best progressive information to dairying uh, that we could possibly have here in the state. We really like to see people who are interested in succession planning to be able to deliver the farm to the next generation. One of the important qualities of the Dairy Farm of the Year is that they have that ability to look ahead and to see what it is they're gonna need for technology in the future. We're talking about farms and farmers that want to be in it for the long run, and the success is then built upon their ability to stay in touch, to be able to progress as things do progress within the industry. Those are really the ones that make the good candidates for Farm of the Year. Dairy Farm of the Year program is sponsored by the Vermont Dairy Industry Association, Vermont Agency of Agriculture, and UVM Extension. Joined with our allied partners out in the field, the lenders, the grain companies, the milk uh, processors, they nominate their best farms for us. Friends and neighbors can nominate farms as well. And in fact, last year we had a couple of neighbors that had nominated their favorite dairy farm in the neighborhood. I was curious why that and then farmers can also nominate themselves. We in the past have had farms actually do that. In Vermont, where there's 600 plus farms, there's plenty of good work that's going on out there. And every year we're happy to, to recognize the Vermont Outstanding Dairy Farm of the Year. We assemble a committee of three previous winners. Those previous winners take a look at all the applications that have come in. They will be the best judges because this really should be a program designed around the jury of your peers. You should have other farmers evaluate and look at your operation. Uh, and, and we find that that adds the most value. Once the, the tour is done for the day, the committee sits down, they look at what they found on our tours, and then by the end of the day, we make that selection. So once our farm is selected, there are a series of ways we recognize the farm of the year. First would be the Vermont Industry Association uh, banquet, our annual meeting, where we recognize them there. We put on a PowerPoint presentation that the farm develops about their operation. It usually lasts five or 10 minutes. Next up is Eastern States Exposition, the Big E down in Springfield. Bring them to a banquet there with the other winners from the six New England states. Recognize all of them as part of the New England Green Pastures program. Uh, then they are also recognized at the Vermont Farm Show, where the governor usually presents uh, a nice large sign that they can put out front, recognizing them as that year's Dairy Farm of the Year. How does somebody get a nomination form? So applications can be found on our website. Forms can be filled out either electronically, online, or they can be downloaded, taken to the farm, because there's a fair amount of information that needs to be gathered. We'll take them any way we can get them. The nomination for the deadline for the 2022 Vermont Dairy Farm of the Year Award is April 30th. But there's no time like the present, so get your nomination in today. From the best of the best in Vermont dairy farming to the top cat at the University of Vermont, Rally Catamount, the UVM mascot, has been cheering for the green and gold since 2004. We reported on Rally's rise to become the cat's meow at UVM a few years ago. Here's Keith Silva. Walk a mile in these shoes, and you'll understand at least one thing. The suit gets hot. Extremely hot. I always bring a change of clothes with me just because like, you're going to walk out of the gym otherwise just like soaking wet, which is not something that people typically think about with mascots. <laughs> when Michaela Sullivan isn't studying for her degree in food science, she's one of 10 UVM students who lace up the skates, pull on the gloves, and put on the head of UVM's mascot, Rally. You get to kind of be whoever you want without anybody really knowing and you know obviously you have to stay within certain rules but there's no boundaries or limitations as to what you can do. 
Rally is the latest in a short line of UVM mascots. In fact, for its first 135 years, Universitas Veridas Montes, UVM to you and me, was mascotless. And then in February of 1926, the Student Senate asked the editors of the Vermont Cynic, the school's newspaper, to publish a ballot. The choices were the Lynx, the Wildcat, I would suggest, or none. Students were asked to send in their choice to the Cynic by the following week. And then, nothing. It's unclear what choice the students made, or if they even sent in their ballots. It's not until three months later, in May of 26, under the headline, Senate returned as a result of ballot by men students, where a subheadline appears, catamount to be mascot. The article goes on to say that the vote took place in the corridor of Old Mill, only men were allowed to vote, and the other mascots up for consideration that day were the cows, camels, and tomcats. The last known wild catamount to be seen in Vermont was killed in 1881. From the lofty peaks of Mansfield The last, and so far only, live mascot to prowl the playing fields of UVM was Rink. He enjoyed a storied but brief run as the official mascot in the fall of 1968. Bought by a South Burlington couple the year before, this puma cub went from 10 to 150 pounds in less than two years before being shipped off in January of 69 to live out his life at Canada's Granby Zoo. For many generations of green and gold fans, the mascots they grew up with are Charlie and Kitty Catamount. Charlie started his life as a bachelor in the 1950s until he met Kitty in the 1970s. The two tied the knot at a UVM hockey game not long after Kitty's arrival. Charlie and Kitty reigned until 2004. Now retired to the UVM Athletic Hall of Fame, it's not known if the couple followed Rink up north to live out their days. The different styles of hats and t-shirts on sale at the UVM bookstore is enough to make a mascot's head spin, or bobble. This is marketing in the modern age. If they could have sold Rink dolls in the 60s, they would have. With brands and branding bigger than ever, it was time for UVM to rally its base. The catamount is critical to my job. Krista Bailo is a UVM Associate Athletic Director and University Licensing Coordinator. Think of her as the keeper of the catamount. She helped give the UVM mascot its makeover in 2004. The look of the mascot is really aligned with the look of our primary mark, which we refer to as the VCAT logo. So it's really important for us to make sure that the mascot, when he is out and about in the community, that it really um, does tell the story of who we are as an athletic department, because he, again, is representing our entire university, not just varsity athletics. When you look at our VCAT logo, you don't necessarily see Charlie Catamount. Now you look at our VCAT logo and you see a representation of that Catamount in Rally Catamount's face, uh, which is also important. I think if you really look across the board at many Division I institutions, you'll see that there is a consistency between their brand and their logo and the mascot. As much as there was a lovableness to Charlie and Kitty, no one uses two mascots. So when the mascot makeover was ordered, two became one and Rally was born. But does he have to look so, you know, scary? I wouldn't say scary, it's probably too strong of a word, but it just teetered that line, you know, and for us there were certain things that we wanted to do to make sure that he still was uh, a friendly, engaging mascot. So an example would be his teeth. The first rendering that came back, he had really sharp, jagged teeth, and um, we ended up asking them to please tone it down a bit, so they rounded the teeth. Um, it's certainly a different look because Kitty and Charlie both had their mouths closed uh, and Raleigh has his mouth open and um, he's much larger. There's actually padding that is in the suit to make him look a bit more muscular and, and strong. And you know That's important to us though. We want him to look like he is a competitor. Baylo graduated from UVM in 2002. So she understands how graduates and fans develop a fondness to their school's mascot. One of the most important pieces of what we do on the day-to-day, -day, and that's being 
friends to our fans and hearing their voices. And there are people in the community who uh, were, you know, upset about Kitty and Charlie moving on and, and being inducted into the Hall of Fame because they identified um, part of their experience at UVM or post-collegiate experience as a fan with the university. So we were very sensitive to that as well. Um, change, as you know, is not easy. Um, and now I'm happy to say that that was a very short stint, you know, with the turnover. Um, and he was quickly beloved by the community, which I really appreciate and, and value about where we live and um, who we have as our fan base. To get to wear the suit comes with some rules. For one, rally doesn't pop. And it's advisable to always keep your head up especially when it comes to selfies. People initially get really excited for the most part um, and go in for the hug or the high five, try to get a picture, and usually it's a selfie, in which case you have to get the head in the photo somehow. Generally involves some sort of standing on my tippy toes if they're tall or crouching down. Uh, if it's a little kid, there's a 50-50 shot that they're going to ball their eyes out. Uh, <laughs> and uh, the other chance is that they get really excited and follow me around and pull on my tail, um, pat me on the head if they're high enough up. <laughs> Big or small, short or tall, there's a little rally in everything. It's like one of the coolest things I've ever done by far. Um, and you know, you just get to like, it's like you get to dress up and play around and like who doesn't want to do that as an adult? You don't get to do that enough. Um, and you know, it's, it's definitely embracing my inner childhood spirit while I can. <laughs> so definitely love that. <laughs> What does it mean to be a catamount? What does it mean to put on the jersey? What does it mean to walk around this campus? Um, and who ultimately embodies uh, the ultimate student here at UVM? And the mascot has to represent who we want to be and who we are. From not being on the ballot to being the big cat on campus, it's good luck to have a mascot if you want to start a rap. At UVM, I'm Keith Silva for the Press of Minutes. And that's our program for today. Thank you for joining us across the fence. I'm Fran Stoddard. Stay well.